You're going to have the pattern off that plate in a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes, uh, I've, uh, I've uh, just been thinking, actually. I gathered that. And I've had an idea. I should hope so. You've been standing there for over an hour. Now, now, listen, love. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, sorry. That's an oven glove. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's a tea towel. Oh. I think we'd better get this idea talked about. You'll be sticking me in the range and going to bed with a log. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, just a sec. Could you just uh, stop doing that for me? Now, look, look, just put, look, leave, just now, leave, leave it alone. Look, would you put it down? Now, put it down. <laughs> Do you mind moving up? I'm apparently in the range, aren't I? <laughs> now, listen, are you listening? Yes. All right. Well, it's that oil in Mrs. Weaver's tank, you see. What about it? Well, must be worth quite a lot of money. I mean, say, 200 gallons? Well, what's that worth these days? No idea. Well, about a hundred pounds at least, I say. Yes. So? It's just lying there. Well, there's not much else oil can do, is there? <laughs> then I got to thinking about Mr. Greaves, you know, the farmer we got our wool from. Have you been inhaling creosote again? <laughs> Seriously. Mr. Greaves uses oil-fired central heating for his calves. Now, I reckon he'd happily swap some nice bales of straw for 200 gallons of oil. Quite a lot of straw, in fact. Tom! Well, it's just lying there. Mrs. Weaver obviously didn't want it, or she'd taken it with her. Well, of course she didn't take it with her. I don't suppose removal firms are equipped with tankers. <laughs> so whose is it, then? Well, it isn't ours. It would be if we siphoned it off. You spiv! What do you mean, spiv? Well, you'll be getting a camel hair coat and a black trilby next. What are you going to do? Stand in the corner and say, psst, want to buy some oil that fell off the back of the lorry? I told you what I'd use it for as an honest swap for something that we need. You can't have an honest swap if you've stolen the oil in the first place. I don't like the word stolen. Well, what would you call it? Acquired. <laughs> That's like saying fibber instead of lie. It's the same thing. It isn't. How? They're spelled differently. <laughs> anyway, the point is you can't steal something that doesn't belong to anybody. Can you? you don't know that. I do. You think you do. Yes, I think I do. You want to think you do. All right, I want to think. No, that isn't it at all. It's obvious. Yes, I think it is obvious to somebody who's just dismissed stealing and fencing all in one go. Why don't you pop up to her roof and have the lead off it while you're at it? <coughs> you're very irrational sometimes, aren't no, you? No, I'm not. I just don't believe in stealing by finding, and neither do you. But if we siphoned it off at night, no one would ever know. <laughs> We'd know. It's like living with George Washington. I'm right, there aren't. But listen, we could use some straw. I know we could. All right, then you think of something. Go on, go on, go on. Huh. All right. An early night. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not being distracted by that old ploy. <laughs> Mind you, I do have to get up early tomorrow. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Thank you very much. Early caller? An emissary from the Music Society. Miss Mountchamp's brother-in-law with a steel plate in his head. <laughs> what do you want? Some metal polish? <laughs> well, having successfully proved to be the society's most inept producer, he is now trying to show an equal non-flair as our costume designer. I thought you should be the first to see our costume designs, Mrs. Ledbetter, as we already think of you as our own sweet charity, little sycophant. <laughs> 
A deviant. Now, what's he drawn? See for yourself. Hmm. All right. Not very well drawn, but all right. All right. Costumes like these are fit only for some back alley striptease club. <laughs> They're just dresses. Who these dresses? Slits and frills and plunging necklines. Dustbin designs. <laughs> and from a dustbin mine. It's that steel plate, I think. It's making him fun. <laughs> Give the man a chance. They're for sweet charity, after all. You can't have the girls going about in the nun's habits left over from Sound of Music. <laughs> and they were supposed to persuade me to play the lead. Well, I think you should, though. Why? You're not a buried in the back row of the chorus sort of person, Margot. That is true. <laughs> the fact remains that I disapprove of us doing the show at all, and these aberrations have confirmed my worst suspicions. Well, don't do it, then. That's easy for you to say. You haven't poured the hours of sheer hard labour into the society that I have. I admit that, yeah. But if my reward is being asked to prance around on the stage of the town hall wearing red sequins and black stockings... <laughs> <laughs> Black stockings. What do you mean? Nothing. Why did you say black stockings with that moon-faced expression? Happen to like black stockings, that's all. I see. And you have some peculiar fantasy about wanting to see your wife dance about in them in front of half of Surbiton. Of course I haven't. Playing the tart. That is sinister, Jerry. Oh, for heaven's sake. Look, I don't give a damn whether you have this part or not. All I said in all innocence was, I happen to like stockings. All right. Why have you never mentioned this fetish before? <laughs> Isn't a fetish? Heaven's sake, you used to wear the things yourself before the advent of these awful tights. Now, well, don't often talk about that sort of thing. <laughs> Just as well if that's the sort of thing those discussions would produce. See you tonight, darling. <laughs> I think you ought to see a doctor, Jerry. <laughs> I think you're in grave danger of becoming some sort of pervert. <laughs> of course, we discussed it sensibly. Then I called Jerry a pervert and he went to work. I don't blame him. Well, perhaps the word was excessive, Barbara, but I was shocked. Why? Well, oh, I mean... What? What do you mean? Well, isn't it obvious? No, it isn't all you've told me so far is that Jerry likes stockings. Well, that's no news. Most men do. How do you know? <laughs> oh, no, we all know. I mean, we took to tights because they're more comfortable, they're more practical, but we all know that blokes think stocking's sexier. Well, we're the ones who have to wear them. Well, they'd look pretty silly in them, wouldn't they? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what you're in such a state about. You're not going to tell me that you've never worn something just because Jerry fancies you in it? Yes. No. <laughs> I may have. Good. But stockings, they have overtones. <laughs> Rubbish! I mean, I could understand it if he wanted you to wear a diver's helmet or a suit of armour. <laughs> but anyway, Margaret, you're missing the point. Surely if your husband fancies you in something, that's nice. That's, that's, that's a compliment. I mean, Tom. Yes. <laughs> Never mind. I think... <laughs> If you take my advice, what you will do next time you go shopping is buy a pair of black stockings. I'm beginning to think the world has gone mad. <laughs> well, you did ask me. I knew, but what if Jerry... Now, Margot, I have said my piece for what it's worth. Now, there's an awful lot of things to do. If you don't mind, I've got to put something on for Tom. What? Nettles. <laughs> I'm making some more dye. So, if you don't mind... Oh, yes, of course. Have a think. Yes. Oh, hello, Margot. You look nice. You've got one track mind. <laughs> what was all that about? Ah, oh, Margot didn't approve of the costume designs for the show. No surprise. She'd win the Prude of the Year award, she would. True? I bet she does it, then. Does what? Plays the lead. She might be all bristling with principles about something she equates with appearing at Raymond's Review Bar. But if it's a choice between that and her being the star, her principles will go out of the window before you can say Shirley MacLaine. I don't know. Well, I do, and I'm always right. <laughs> well, there is that. Now, do you want anything? Because I've got this dying to do. Yes, there is something. That oil. Oh, Tom, I thought we'd settled that. We have, but there's been a development. What? Some filthy swine has been pinching it. How do you know? 
I've just been to check the gauge. It's, it's nearly half gone. The hole is halfway down. Well, who could that be? I don't know, but I think it's disgusting. <laughs> well, you were all ready to pinch the stuff yourself last night. That's quite different. I had a worthwhile motive. The care and comfort of our pigs. Well, I suppose whoever else is pinching it has got a worthwhile motive. They're hardly likely to drink it. Well, they're not getting any more of it, I'll tell you that. Why? Because we are. Oh, you can justify that now, of course. Yes, I can. What source for the goose is, is, is gander for the other? <laughs> Why should we sit about being all fine and good when someone else is pinching the stuff? Boy, when you go blind in one eye, you really go blind in one eye. What? Well, honestly, you have the cheek to talk about Margot compromising her principles and you sit there and you are doing exactly the same thing. You certainly know how to hit below the belt, don't you? Only when you're wrong. 